Okay, hi everybody. Uh, this next segment is going to take us up to the noon hour, and um, you see the trajectory of what's been happening this morning from uh, painting the picture of Tax Policy 101 to the wonderful presentation we just had, and then we're going to continue to get more and more specific. So um, I'm Kathy Gerwig. I'm with Kaiser Permanente. I'm the Vice President for Employee Safety, Health, and Wellness, and I'm the Environmental Stewardship Officer. And when Bobby asked those two questions at the beginning, um, I raised my hand beginner. I like, I like Philip's pre-beginner better. Um, and I also raised my hand on anxious. So I am far from an expert, um, but so far today, I've learned a lot. I hope you have too, and we'll continue that with the wonderful panel that we have. Just to uh, kick us off very briefly uh, around you know, the topic of demystifying tax policy as it pertains to population health, uh, at Kaiser Permanente, we, we think a lot about what counts as health care and the fact that what, what, what counts as health care is expanding. Um, and everybody in this room realizes that health issues don't stay within the walls of an exam room or a healthcare facility, and that we do need to address the social, the economic, the environmental determinants of health. And that means helping people access uh, affordable housing and uh, getting reliable transportation to a job and getting a job. Um, and so lowering the barriers to what, what creates health is the role of everybody in this room and certainly uh, the role of those who provide clinical care because uh, providing clinical care in an environment in which there are so many other barriers to good health isn't, isn't doing anybody any good. And so um, tax policy is obviously one of the big barriers. It's confounding to a lot of people. Wearing my environmental hat, you can't have a conversation about climate change without carbon tax coming up. And um, some of us, when that topic comes up, just you know, eyes glaze over. Others um, get very polarized. So one of the outcomes of what we're trying to do here today is help all of us learn new information and tools so that when those kinds of conversations occur, we can contribute in a, in a thoughtful and meaningful way. And so all of these tax experts are health experts, too, because of what they do. And with that, let me just uh, turn it right over to our speakers. I'll tell you who's here and, um, and then introduce our uh, first speaker. Um, we're actually going to be looking, if you've uh, taken a look at the typology, that lovely chart that's in your packet, um, you will see that we're, in this session, we're going to be talking about two different tax policy approaches for generating funding to support population health. We've got sin taxes, which are a type of excise tax, and then tax credits. So first up will be Aisha Pamaku, and she's senior staff attorney at the Change Lab Solutions. And she works primarily on law and policy issues related to healthy retail environments and just food systems. Through the miracle of technology, we have Xavier Morales. Xavier, could you just say hello so we actually know you're with us? And Kamani's telling me no, he won't say hello. <laughs> He's here, but he can't say hello. <laughs> well. Uh, Xavier is executive director of the Praxis Project and a longtime advocate for community-driven initiatives to achieve health equity and environmental justice, and I'm, I'm assured we'll be hearing from him later. Meredith Fowley is um, associate professor, and Jim Sally is assistant professor. Both are with the Department of Agriculture and Resource Economics right down the road at UC Berkeley. So with that, let me turn it over to Aisha.